how a generator's automatic cycle works. To make this video, I used a generator and transfer switch sequence of operation to illustrate what happens when the power fails. We are generatorhelponline.com. Put us in your favorites. Follow us on Facebook. All information expressed by Standby Power Solutions, LLC, or its officers, is strictly the opinion of Standby Power Solutions, LLC. The better you understand what to expect out of your emergency generator, the better you will be able to react during an emergency and the less you will spend on outside service calls and repairs. The generator sequence is not difficult. However, it involves a lot of steps. So you may have to view this video many times. Compare these steps to your own system to develop a better understanding. For this example, I used an Onan OT3 transfer switch. All transfer switches are similar. The time delay sequences are defined by code, and that is NFPA 110. Step 1. Under normal conditions with the generator and automatic transfer switch at rest, the power sentry will monitor the utility side voltage. The source 1 available light will be on. This indicates the utility voltage is OK. In the timer column, the retransfer complete light should be on. The generator should not be running. The transfer switch contactors connect utility power to the load and the generator AC circuits are de-energized. Now pause it here for a second and look at the arrows. Utility side voltage is on. The retransfer from the last operation indicates complete. You'll notice the generator is not running and the little guy is scratching his head. And the contactors in green connect utility power to the load. In step two, the normal power has failed and you'll see the source one available light is out. This begins the timing sequence to start the generator. In the timer column, the retransfer complete light should still be on. There is no light that comes on to tell you it's timing for a start. The generator should not be running. The transfer switch contactors connect the utility circuit to the load, but the utility is de-energized or the voltage is deficient. The generator AC circuits are still de-energized. Now you'll see on the arrows, the retransfer from the last operation is still indicating complete. Source 2 light is not on and will not come on until the generator starts. The generator is not running. The utility power has failed. There is no AC power on the contactors that are still connected to the dead utility. Step 3. After the timing for start timer times out. This takes from 1 to 10 seconds. A signal is sent to the generator's engine to crank and the gen start light comes on. When the engine starts, the generator begins to make AC voltage. The source 2 available light will come on when the voltage becomes available from the generator. Also, after voltage becomes available from the generator, the timing for transfer light will come on. This timer allows the engine to warm up a bit. It allows the oil to get up on the crankshaft so that you're not throwing a load on a dry shaft. It prevents the contactor from switching the load to the generator for up to 120 seconds after the generator starts. The generator AC circuits are energized, but the contactor is still connected to the dead utility. Take a look at the arrows. Start light is on, the timing for transfer light is on, the generator power available light is on. You see smoke coming out of the generator stack indicating the generator is running. On the contactors, you see the contactor is still connected to the utility, and you see the generator uh, contacts are energized. They are in red now. Here are a few generator control panels. The generator control panel controls the generator function and keeps the engine running as long as the transfer switch sends the signal. The generator control panel controls the engine speed 
and voltage, as well as monitors the engine temperature and oil pressure. When voltage and frequency are presented to the automatic transfer switch at acceptable values, the transfer switch begins the transfer timing cycle. Whatever control panel you have should display for you the appropriate voltage and the appropriate frequency. Step four. When the timing for transfer timer times out, the timing for transfer lights will switch from timing to complete and the main contactor will disconnect the load from the now dead utility and connect it to the generator. This status will remain until the utility voltage is restored to within acceptable limits. See on the arrows, my start light, my generator start light is still on. The generator power available light is still on. We're still getting smoke out of the engine. The timing for transfer is now complete and you see the contactor has switched from the utility over to the generator power. Step five, when the utility voltage returns, the source one available light will come on and the retransfer timing light will come on. The transfer switch will begin timing for its return to utility power. This timer can be adjusted for up to 30 minutes. The time delay allows the utility to stabilize before accepting the load. On your arrows, you see the utility power has returned. The start light remains on. The generator power available is still on. The generator is still running. The load is still connected to the generator. The transfer is indicating complete and the retransfer is still timing. Now note, transfer means electrical power transferred to the generator. Retransfer means electrical power transfers back to the utility. The reason for a retransfer timer is that after an outage, the utility is often unstable. This timer allows the utility to stabilize before connecting to the load. The idea is to protect your equipment from voltage dips and surges. Be aware that during the retransfer cycle, every time the utility dips below preset voltage values, the retransfer timer resets back to zero. Those dips can make it seem like the generator is running for an extra long time when it's only doing its job. Step six, when the retransfer timer times out, the retransfer timing light will switch to retransfer complete and the contactor transfers the load back to the utility. At the same time, the stop timing light will come on. The stop timer allows the generator engine to run with no load for up to 10 minutes and exhaust any excess heat that has built up while carrying the electrical load. On your arrows, you'll see utility available is on. The start light remains on. The generator power is still available and you'll see from the smoke, the generator is still running. The retransfer timer is now complete. The switch is timing to stop the generator and the timing light stop is on. The contactors are connected to the utility. You can see they're in green now. The stop timer is also called the cool down timer. The cool down timer keeps the engine running in order to dump excess heat. It does not actually cool the system down. It just brings it to a lower temperature so that the radiator does not evacuate fluid. Usually just five minutes is adequate, although these timers can be set to longer run times. Step seven, after the stop timer times out, the engine will be turned off. The generator will stop producing electricity and the power sentry will return to step one condition. In your arrows, you can see the source one available light is on. The generator is not running and there's no smoke being produced by the generator. The retransfer timing light has gone to complete and the utility is connected to the load you can see with the uh, green contactors. Now you're ready for another power outage. I based this video on the Onan OT3 transfer switch, 
which was discontinued around 2000. This is an excellent switch. The OT3 used capacitors to keep the timers going during transition. They instantly recharged from either power source as soon as one became available. Later switches from almost all manufacturers use batteries. Some of these batteries are rechargeable, some are not. These batteries all fail. Some of them fail as soon as three years. The use of batteries increases your cost and diminishes reliability. Read your owner's manual and service the batteries regularly. Do you have more questions concerning emergency generators? Reach out to me at paul at generatorhelponline.com. Visit our website also at generatorhelponline.com. All information expressed by Standby Power Solutions, LLC, or its officers is strictly the opinion of Standby Power Solutions, LLC.